Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Welcome, dear friends, to Kardec Radio and the Spirit of Sutter, Virginia in 2021. We're celebrating a new beginning. New beginnings happen every day. Yes, but this is special. It's a new decade. It's a new decade in the 21st century. Wow. We wonder about the curriculum of the earth because we know our planet is under the command of Master Jesus. He's our governor. He's an educator par excellence. He knows it all. And we bet he has a good plan for us in the school year for all the inhabitants of the earth. And we think that he's asking us to meditate on social issues. Why not? You and I, all of us, participate as citizens in the making off of the history of our planet. And Leon Denis, the apostle of spiritism, whom we have been studying throughout this week through different hosts at Kardec Radio, we are learning so much. With Leon Denis, who was born in 1846, did you know he was born on January 1st? 1846, he discarnated in 1927. He was a philosopher of the modern times, and he was, he is considered to be the apostle of spiritism. He followed exactly what Kardec shared with us and added, he continued it. He was born in a small town in France named Fog near Tours, and he comes to us humble, simple, and bringing so much poetry, philosophy. He comes to embrace us into a new proposal, especially about social issues. And today, our whole team is here, Luciana, Daisy, Carol, and Paloma. We're here together to share with you two beautiful chapters that he wrote in this book, After Death. After Death, written in 1905, 116 years ago. And he's talking about things that are so current that it's almost astounding. Right, friends? Yeah. Right. Right. So let us begin. Just so we kick start, he begins chapter 55 of this book after death, talking about social issues and stating, our times are deeply troubled by social issues. Oh, my Mia. More than a century went by and we're still there. Why? Can't explain it. Right? And then I'll read a little more so we open for studying and conversation together. It's like a round table here with you, friends. Feel free also to write your comments and your questions. We will address here with you. He says, we have come to realize that neither all the progress of civilization, such as the huge growth of productive power and of wealth, nor development of education, have been able to extinguish pauperism, or cure the pains of the majority and leaving the current pandemic. It's the living proof, proof that this is so, so current. So here we are, Paloma, Carol, Daisy, and Luciana. Let us discuss a little bit about this because he wrote it more than a century ago and we're still there. So much improvement has happened and yet and sorrows so present right it's interesting that he starts by talking about social issues it's saying we recognize there is progress in the civilization but then he's gonna go to say so how come we have social issues 
right? Like we have social issues, it's a fact, and we still have it to this day. He, you know, Leon Denis was already talking about progress of civilization then. We've seen so much more. You know, now we have cell phones. They didn't have a cell phone back then. Yeah. And we're yet lacking something. What is it? Good question. What is it? Carol. Yes, in the gospel, according to Spiritism, this goes hand in hand with Kardec's and the Illuminated Mind's proposal for improvement as a society. In the gospel, according to Spiritism, there is a passage that tells us that the malice of our current society is lack of moral advancement. Though we are very intellectually developed, we haven't developed morally yet. And we need two wings to fly, right? So we are very developed on the one side, but atrophied on the other side. So we haven't been able to ascend yet because we need to work on our moral growth. This is why the current educational system, as Leon Denis mentioned back then and now, is failing because we are not allowed to speak of God publicly anymore. For instance, in public schools, this is a problem because we are not prioritizing our true purpose for being incarnated, which is to develop virtues. Yes, you're right. Daisy. Yes, so interesting as you're saying that, Carol, um, and as we read this first, this first chapter, uh, part of the chapter by Leon Denis, that he mentions wealth and education. And we still live in a society that since we're born, we, we focus, right, we're of obtaining the wealth, right? Or we have to have a good education to work, to produce, to uh, give to our families. But it's interesting that, uh, you know, so many years ago, something was already missing. And, and it, as we continue in the chapter, he's going to tell us what is missing, but what is really missing? Because if we continue in this wealth, focus on wealth and education, the problems of our society is still going to exist. Yeah. So the key is for us to really focus on what we haven't for a long time, as you already mentioned, um, Carol. Yes. Right, Luciana. Yes, and as we are discussing and talking about Leon Denis in the chapter before titled Education, he mentioned that we are being yes. failing, right, in educating our children, the new generation, and also that we were not educated yet how to be a better social being, right, to live in society. So we are, again, like we are mentioned before, we are failing in the beginning how to to take our children, the new generation, and educate themselves to know how to live in society and vanish with the problems. Yes. So talking about social issues, one of the major social issues is about the difference in wealth. And it's so current in the United, in the United States alone, there's this big misinformation about uh, um, people who think that there are people who want to be pro-socialism, pro-communism, and, and it's exactly what he's talking about in this chapter. And this was 1905 in France, and he's talking about a scenario that is so common nowadays, this inequality of wealth. Mm -hmm. That talks about it in the Spirit's book as well, way before Leon Denis, mentioned it and he says to us that um rather than mutual benevolence that brings people together which would enable humans to study and solve the greatest problems jointly it is with violence and verbal threats 
that the proletarians claim. They are shared in social welfare. And it is grimly that the wealthy retreat in their selfishness and refuse to relinquish the least crumbs of their fortune in benefit of the starving. Consequently, misunderstandings, hatred, and envy build up, deepening the gap between them day by day. This was a scenario back then and still so current all over the world. We know that those who are truly wealthy are less than 0.1% of the population in the world. And in the United States alone, it's not different. And we see that this violence, these verbal threats are more than present now in social media. It becomes very evident. Those who lack become aggressive. Those who have become dismissive and indifferent and all the more selfish. And he says to us, consequences are misinformation. And that's exactly what we have nowadays. Now we have this massive misinformation that we could call fake news or to be plain and truthful lies, lies, and hatred and envy. Mm -hmm. So if we go, friends, if we go back to 2,000 years ago, we're just going 100 years. We know that. We go back 2,000 years ago, get the book 2,000 years ago by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. That's exactly the preface of Emmanuel saying that here he was reporting the same issues that were happening and have, as, have always happened. Envy, hatred, and he uses these expressions and these words as well. So we're still, we're not even talking about a hundred years. We're talking about millennia. Millennia of lies, slanders. Emmanuel talks about, instead of misinformation, slander, hatred, envy. And Leon Denis comes back to us talking about the same social issues and the same problems happening to date, moral problems. Yeah, and it comes again, like we were mentioned before, like we had this lack so much of moral because we are lost or we, we are not educated to how to become more moral, right? So we go in this wave that everything that people are doing is okay, and then we don't stop to meditate, to see what is right, not only for me, but for the whole society. And as Leonidine is mentioning, like we just become more apart than become together, right? Instead of unite, we're becoming more apart because of this big lack of moral education. Yes, moral education, that is the very, very thing. And when we are talking about this, he says to us that inevitably, in that state of mind, we create wars. So let us talk about, in the spiritist sense, the root of wars, mental battles. If we go to the book in the domains of mediumship, Andre Lewis shows to us, it says millions of households are under mental battles and of course a physical war begins with mental battles so we are talking about these mental battles we're talking about people who sometimes let's say the truth they look at people who are wealthy and say oh man they 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 hold the monopoly right it's like a, the movie if we go to the movie what a wonderful life the Mr. Potter, it's like Mr. Potter uh, syndrome. It's like he wants everything for himself. And people look like, oh, they are angry at that person. And the people who hold the money look 
at the people, the blue collar people, and they're like, oh, they have never worked as hard as I did. It's been in our family. We worked very hard for this. We're not going to share. We're not going to care. And then it's a mental battle. So let's talk about these mental battles in envy, slander, in uh, not only about the socioeconomic issues, we're talking about systematic racism, we're talking about uh, domestic violence that are that is also generated by these elements that we're talking about. There's so many issues going on that begin with a mental battle. I think it's fascinating the way Leon Denise bring this to us. Um, Vanessa, as you're saying that um, everything starts at home, which is what Leon Denise is approaching social issues to be. He's saying, yes, there is a system in place to you know, work in our society. We need systems in place. That said, when we complain about the system, it is not the system, really, it's ourselves, which brings us to this lack of, you know, understanding of the moral laws, the practice of the moral laws, especially at home, which then is the consequence for all these issues that affect all of us. We are not separated from the rich or the poor, from the women or the men or the children or the elderly, we're all together and our lives are intertwined. So something that happens to our neighbors affects us, right? And, and Paloma, when you're saying this, it came to me, a case in the book, In Life Goes On, because talking about, you know, transference of wealth, um, there is this man, right? Um, Kyle, right? Married to Evelyn. And then he cheats on her. All right? Yes. Right. You're right. She dies. And then at some point, at some point, Kyle, he comes and he's having this relationship with this woman, she has a mother and the mother's not mentally stable. So in the name of love, he says, don't worry, I'll take care of the things for you. And he, and he keep, and, and, and he ends up acquiring all of the wealth of the family. But then the good spirits tell Andrea Lewis, that <laughs> so interesting that one day soon this woman the mother is going to discarnate and in 30 years she's going to come back before 30 years as the child of the couple and in 30 years when he discarnates the wealth goes back to her but not only that, it's like much more. So I see many people, friends, who come to me and say, oh, this is my money and I worked for it, blah, blah, blah. But who knows if in a previous life, what you took from those people, now they are back in your life and you're giving back what you took from, from them. So the money is not ours. And Emmanuel, in the book Money and Other Books, he shares with us through Chico Xavier that with few exceptions, the wealth of today has usually come through not very honest means. And honest is not only about stealing. It's much more than that. Sometimes people keep a position at work because they get into the gossip mill 
and they get promoted based on that system. So it's not clean. The job you're keeping is not clean. And many people come and say, oh, I can't sleep. No wonder. We can't sleep after doing spending the day this way. Oh, but I need to keep my job. Yeah, but you're keeping the job not in a very clean way. How many people do whole careers and to maintain it's beyond competence? It's more about the things we do or don't do to maintain that job. And sometimes there are people who lose their jobs because we don't put a word for them and we could have. Or because we say things that are not very truthful and they lose their jobs. And then no wonder we're going to visit many nursing homes and see many elderly people regretting much in their lives. Sometimes Alzheimer comes as a saving grace to forget the much we have done wrong. And for women, sometimes it's abortion. We live a whole life doing things, but then at the end of it, we regret those decisions. It never goes away. Some people have asked, how do I get rid of this guilt? We need, the, 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 the saying by Jesus is this, love covers a multitude of sins. Love but it's not this petty love. It's a whole lot of love. We need a mountain of love to cover that multitude of sins. So a whole lot of love. If people live their lives going from work to home, home to work, taking care of their families, and they think they're going to be in the math of their minds, they're going to be good in the books of God, they won't. We needed to walk extra miles to really change those feelings and feel good and feel we're brand new. All right, friends. I know we're covering a lot of things, but it, it, I was inspired by what Ma Paloma said as she brought us to Leon Denis Center Stage. She, the conclusion is, these social issues begin inside of us. Racism, for example. Misinformation. Let's talk about misinformation because nowadays during in the internet, we see many people talking about the issues of socialism and communism. And what is, where is spiritism on it? I'll read so we can keep discussing here. How is one to reconcile the social classes and appease the weak passions? If everything incites one to fight and the living forces of the nations are heading toward destruction. Among the systems advocated by the socialists, socialists in order to obtain a practical organization of labor and a reasonable distribution of material goods, the most famous are cooperation and labor association. There are some who go as far as defending communism. Until now, the partial application of those systems has produced only meager results in France. So you see, Leon Denis talks the, the, the very talk of spiritism. We are pro-fraternity. Nothing to do with Marxism, the communism, the, the communism that comes from Karl Marx. No, we don't. And in the United States alone, we can trust that we won't go there. We won't go there. And it says more. Until now, the partial application of those systems has produced only meager results in France. Truth is that in order to live in association, 
in order to be part of something in which many interests join and merge, one needs to have qualities that have become rare nowadays. Neither the cause of evil nor its remedy are to be found where one looks for them most frequently. So before we go on and on, we're talking about the fact that spiritism does not support communism. And this is a discussion that many people have been asking. No, we don't. Because it's not natural. In the Spirit's book, when he talks about inequality of riches, the Spirit say, you may distribute equally to everyone the next day, the inequalities would reappear. Why? Because of the different, the, di the diversity of capabilities. Not everybody is able to manage wealth like some people do. They would probably lose it all. So here we come to revisit the very issues that we are all equal before God, but the inequalities of wealth, they pertain to experiences we need to evolve. The poor to endure and be resilient, and the wealthy to be selfless and charitable. These are practices that only when we have those experiences we can practice very clearly. And to avoid rebelliousness when we're poor. So let us talk about this. Paloma, you want to say something? Yeah, because uh, Leon Denis brings a, a number on this. He says nine out of ten chances are that they shall be reborn in poverty. So that's a reminder for us that even if we find ourselves in a, in a position, uh, you know, very prosperous right now financially, most likely... <laughs> the next one won't be the same, right? So it's exactly to what you were saying, Vanessa. Remember that if you are now, maybe it is time to pay your, you know, past debts and for the next reincarnation for us not to, to have to go such hard trials. Yes. That most likely we will, will per Leon Denis. So the question, Paloma, is, he says, the wealthy retreat in their selfishness and refuse to relinquish the least crumbs of their fortune. The question is, are we like that? And people may quickly reply, no, but I'm not wealthy. Well, it depends. It's relative. Mm -hmm. Right? Ten bucks for us? Maybe a million. Maybe symbolic of what a million to us is ten bucks for somebody else. Do we share? We are we being selfless? Vanessa, it's interesting that you are asking all of us this question because it makes it brings us back to the study of the book Liberation, in which we see spirits who recently discarnated being judged in a tribune in the spiritual realm and some of them are qualified as meagers as avarice as uh, those who do not share their wealth and one particular spirit came to the so-called judge in the lower zones and said but i didn't have any money but i just lived a peaceful life how may i be labeled a meager and the, the judge in the lower zone explains, you had the wealth of knowledge. You read so many books, you knew so much, and you kept all that knowledge locked onto your own self. Thus, now you have to pay taxes, symbolically speaking, by atoning for your selfishness right here in the spiritual realm. And then this spirit had to come to terms with his own inner reality and choices. And the alarm in his consciousness went off to say, yes, I recognize that I made this mistake. So many of us, when comparing ourselves to such and such 
celebrity may feel as though we lack and we are quote unquote disadvantaged, but as Chico Xavier taught all of us, we who know so much, especially spiritism, are millionaires. And with social media, we are all able to very easily, with a click, literally one fingertip, share the knowledge and allow a little grain of light to reach the other side of the planet and even the spirit realm through the discarnates that are around us. So no one can, no one of us can argue that we are not able to share our wealth any longer. Exactly. And Gary, you want to remind of that uh, about uh, Emperor Adriano, the Roman Emperor? Yeah. 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 In the book, 50 years later, uh, the Roman, F, like, let us explain just as a reference for everyone, the book 50 years later, is an account written by the spirit mentor Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. And uh, just going back one moment, he goes through the spirit Emmanuel accounting, giving an account of his own life, goes through the change that Leon Denis mentioned and that Paloma mentioned, that one day we are reborn wealthy, quote unquote, as a senator, in the Roman Empire, and the next life we are born possibly as a slave, which was the case in the book 50 years later. The same spirit that animated the body of a very wealthy person now animates the body of a slave. And later on in the book, we see that the emperor, Adriano, that was very considered almost like a semi-god is seen after his discarnation in the spirit realm by uh, Neo Lucio. He's seen again in a new reincarnation, forgive us, in the body of a paralytic as the son of a slave, of a very humble woman. So the same spirit, once again, just to clarify, that animated the body of a person who had the highest position in the greatest empire of the time, reincarnated in the body of a child with disabilities in the lowest chain of the society there, the lowest end of the social chain. Thank you. Thank you, Clara. Thank you. It's a reminder, right? And as Luciana said, Leon Denis comes here, right, Luciana? And he says, the cause of evil resides within us, in our passions, in our errors. That is what must change. And you said more education. Right? Yeah, this more education that we lack and we still learning and even like uh, as we come further in the, the chapter in this uh, discussion with Leon Dini, how I feel like in this school phase, right? To, to really learn, to really do our homework because even like Carol mentioned, Paloma mentioned, this thing that we need to have to share, right? To be fraternal to others. We need to exercise to do the good because uh, we are still very, very uh, egocentric, not even putting out what we are supposed to do. So yes, in an example, if we have wealth, whatever we have, we need to be able to, to do this morally thoughts process in our mind and help because this is our task to be helping. And if we're in the other position, as the chapter was saying, we need to be humble and understanding is something like that. It is in the progress that we are all evolving together. So no one is better than the other. It's just like a, a time for us to learn more how to deal with the wealth and how to deal with the poverty. But we need all be doing 
what we are supposed to do so we can evolve and have a better yeah. society and, in the and, future. And Daisy, he, Leon Denis, at some point, we're going to go back to the, the way we can heal our society and improve. But he says, the social issues do not comprise only the relations between the different classes. They also comprehend the situation of the women of all ranks who are so greatly sacrificed and to whom it would be fair to assure a dignified position along with the exercise of their natural rights. If one desires the families to be stronger, to have stricter morals and be more united, the women are the souls of the family home. They represent the qualities of gentleness and peace in humankind. If they were released from the yoke of superstition, if only their voices were heard in the councils of nations, and if they could exert their share of influence, all the torments of war would soon disappear. This was 1905 of super duper vanguard men. Leon Denis is exceptional. Like Kardec, they are always ahead, ahead of the times, even today. And, and you know, Daisy, how hard it is. Our society is still oppressing women, girls, even in, in, in marital relationships. Men daring to tell their wives what to do and what not to do, irrespective of the nation they're living in, right? Oh, yes, exactly, Vanessa. Like you said, it, it regardless of where we are, we see still see this difference, right? Oh, it's you know in in the home, sometimes we small things right chores right and oh no this you know this is the women's chore or this is the men's chore right um yeah of course we understand our bodies are built different right and and in leon denis acknowledged that each the men have their role the women have their role but we here we're talking about and this was super highlight because i i highlighted twice in, in as i was reading this chapter because it, he says, you know, the women is the soul of the home and in, in, in really putting women and acknowledging the, the role of women in the home has the soul bringing, and he says, peace and mildness to the home, which is, is so key. But as you said, there's still in our society, right, this difference in and you, you can be in the United States, you can be in any of the continents and you see um, in inside the home, in the workplace, how women are still seen different than men, you know, um, how uh, even talking about uh, maternity leave and, and how it's still, uh, you know, we are here in the US and you, you, you talk about it and there's, you know, no, no maternal leave. Uh, I mean, officially by the law, it's um, in 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 how can how can you really talk about uh, ending the social issues if we don't bring this to the light? There is no way. Um, we are all equal at the end, right? And we need to talk about also the importance of bringing this, especially with the women. There's no way to talk about it without talking yeah. about the and issue. One, and one day, Daisy, I recall mentor Joseph sharing something. I was shocked about, you know, this family, this man worked and the woman had to take care of the children and, and how she was oppressed by the man because, you know, she didn't bring the money to the plate, but you know, she was working 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And mentor Joseph showed the image of what the good spirits are planning for this man in the next life. And he showed this man, they're already designing it, like in the book and life goes on, 30 years ahead, they already knew what was gonna happen and they already designing it. And they, he showed this man reincarnated as a very poor woman in Africa 
in a very difficult marriage with a husband. So the man today reincarnated in another country in very poor conditions. And as a woman with lots of kids and being oppressed by the men in a, in a very brutal way. And I asked me to just, but why is this punishment? He said, no, it's a lesson. This is called expiation, Vanessa. Because as Kardec says, sometimes we need to go through those trials to never forget and never repeat this again. I was shocked because I saw the picture. I could, if I were a good artist, I could draw it as vivid as it's, it was. Just like the Emperor Adriano. If you read the book, he's so wealthy and proud of himself and he's donating lands and he's building whatever he likes in the next life, he's very lyric. And not only that, but he's born in the house of his labor. Do we wish on anybody? No, but this is the law of action and reaction cause and effect, or as Kardec states in some books, the law of reincarnation, it's a law. So the question is, what are we sowing right now? Because some people I see, they're so concerned about what happened in the past and how this life is a burden from the past. But we forget that we're sowing today for tomorrow. So let us worry about what we're building today for tomorrow. What are we building? Is it gonna bring happiness? Is it going to be, bring joy? Is it going to bring unity? Or is it going to bring discord? Because if we plant discord, we're going to have more discord. If we plant slander, we're going to reap. There isn't much more. So we need to think about what we're showing right now. So let us talk a little bit more about this role of women in society. Because this is the greatest inequality. Jim Carter, the former president of the United States, says that the ultimate frontier in our society is empowerment, the empowerment of women. We're not there yet. Vanessa, we often hear in our workplace when a colleague of ours chooses to leave the workplace to care for their family very lovingly we literally hear other women which is the most surprising aspect of it for us criticizing the one that has made the choice to prioritize loving those incarnated souls that were given from God to her tutorship. But then through Spiritism we learn, specifically it comes to our mind, the book O Consolador, not yet in English, The Consoler by the Spirit Emmanuel through Chico Xavier, in which Emmanuel literally tells us that motherhood is the most sublime mission on the face of this earth. So those of us who dare to put down the work of a woman who dedicated herself to bringing up spirits that were entrusted to her are daring to doubt God's greatness because it was, we forget as a society that it is God's design that women are mediums of life. Women are vessels of God's love through which spirits materialize. We often talk about materialization and the phenomena and wanting to see the beyond, but we see the beyond every time a, a mother gestates the body of an incarnating spirit. And we forget how sacred this mediumship with God is 
So women are literally mediums of God's of God's love. And this is what we need to rescue. This is what spiritism can help rescue because we know the veil of ignorance is lifted from our eyes by the loving spirits that work under the Christ. And so we need, it is our responsibility to share this knowledge so we can free ourselves from so much blindness and ignorance regarding the sacred role of women on earth. You said it all, Caro, in Paloma. Yes, I was going to say it, it's so easy. Leon Denis is brilliant, really is, because he, he went from a top-down approach, went from social issues to bringing it to the individual level, bringing it to our homes. And now he's saying, what does sustain the homes? There's this very strong force, which are played by the role of women, right? And what do we do with that? We undermine it. Therefore, we're causing the social issues. And, and you can also say, well, we don't want the social issues, then you support that role so that that role can support the individuals in that home, that those individuals will play a role according to God's law in the society, right? So it's so critical, the role of a woman. And in so many places, because we are half of the population of the world. We're not minority. We are not minority. We are half of the population. So we should be able to express ourselves as half of the population and have laws according to a majority and allow girls to go to school like anybody else because we still have situations where some girls cannot go to school in some countries or they're deemed dirty because of their monthly cycle. We're past that. We are now past it. And Leon Denis said this a long time ago and seems crazy that we are still discussing these issues, but time is over. And I believe that the pandemic bought, brought this front and center where mothers are being pulled into so many directions trying to fit the work that they have to provide, because let us remember the time that a man was able to afford the house is long past too. Most families now are dual incomes. So yes, the man thinks they are exercising the power, but they're not paying all the bills any longer. So the women are being pulled in many directions. We're having meetings, all of us, you know, some of us have kids and they walk in and, you know, I'm a mother. Embrace it. It is what it is. <laughs> and Paloma, Leon Denis says it 115 years ago. The positions occupied by women in society are usually rather unimportant. I know we're changing it, but still, majority of the places on earth, this is the way it is. They frequently are slaves. And this makes them all the greater in spiritual life, since the more one is humiliated and sacrificed here on earth, the more merit one will have in the eyes of eternal justice. Nonetheless, it would be utterly absurd to use these future joys as a pretext to preserve the social inequalities. Our duty is to work according to our capacity in favor of the accomplishment of providence's designs on earth, Indeed, the education and elevation of women, mm -hmm. the extinction of misery, ignorance and war, the fusion of all social classes in solidarity and the organization of our planet. All these reforms are part of the divine plan, which is nothing else than the law of progress. Now, a pause here, talking about women. Even if the man provides, if the woman stayed home to take care of the kids, that work is so sublime 
that there's no money that could ever pay it for it, pay for it. The other day I saw a girl in the United States, beautiful thought. She's advocating for a bill one day to go through the House of Representatives and the Senate where women who become mother, mothers will stay at home. Mom will receive $2,400. Maybe a great idea. But we say, is this the price? Is this the price to do laundry, take care of the home, take care of the kids and do everything? No, we're not complaining about it or trying to put a price. We're just saying there must be respect. If we believe that whomever brings the money says the last word or dictates how the money is going to be spent, this is called materialism. And if you are a spiritist and you behave in this way, you're worse than a materialist because you're a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite because you show your face saying, I'm a spiritist. But in the four walls of your house, you enslave your wife and you undermine her efforts thinking that you're better than her. Shame on you. Hypocrite. Vanessa, you, uh, as we're having this discussion, it reminds me about another message from Leon Denis about women um, that is in another book in the invisible that um, it's published in the Spiritist magazine. And if people don't have the book, uh, I actually just found it number 47. But after I read that message for me, it was like, it, it really changed because he brings what you're saying that women and men, they are that one day they will be seen as equal, but they have different roles. And as we're talking here about women and in, 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 in what Carol was saying, what we see is that women trying to put themselves in the shoes of the men, right? They trying to climb the ladder in the workplace, you know, either of, you know, undermining, you know, or putting their uh, families uh, in, in the second hand. But he, Leon Denis says that, that we each have our role, right, the men, and the women, and that will be one day that they will see, like you're saying, that the motherhood is sacred and staying at home and, and, and that is the sacred job has equal as the one that leaves and comes back at the end of the day with, um, you know, maybe with the money to provide for the household. So uh, Leon Denis is unprecedented because he brings us this different view on men and women that we 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 I, I i haven't really seen anywhere else it's and daisy the worst of it all i've seen is when women tell me i am not going to stop working to be home taking care of the children i wish i could but i won't want because i don't want to depend on my husband and i understand them but is it the way it should be? I know many women make choices to stay in the task force of work, not because they need, but because they don't want to depend on their husbands. They don't want to be subjugated. And then what happens? We're not educating well the next generation. Because then they are at the care of people who don't love them. And then we just postpone the progress of, we delay our progress. Because when you are able to raise your kid with your love, no one can top it. Because schools nowadays, that school is at home, social distancing, because of so, uh, the distance learning, I see what they are learning and I can tell you, okay, maybe good, but they don't teach morals, emotional management, zero. They spend the whole day 
just being the winds of life without a real solid direction. And then if they come home at the end of the day, and all we have to do is come on to homework and bath and bed, what do they learn? Nothing. And if at the beginning of life, they go very early to a daycare and don't have a solid foundation, no wonder we're seeing drug addiction. Today, a friend was telling me, Vanessa, did you know my kid? And I know many friends who have teenagers who have TikTok, especially Snapchat. And they are talking about how girls are practicing this, you know, sex through Snapchat and crazy things, drugs, sex, and why? Do you think they were raised at a home where people loved them, cared for them? No, they were probably those babies who were very early sent to a daycare. I know good ones. They turned out good, but that's just gambling, right? You never know. In spiritism, we know that when you are not strong spiritually, you need very good guidance. And you won't find it in a daycare, in a preschool, no matter how expensive it is. And many women will say, I'm not going to subjugate, be subjugated by my husband. We understand them. But we'll say, what's going to happen to the next generation? We see the delay, 115 years later, and we're still crawling at the footsteps of these inequalities. And we're seeing major, major disadvantages to people, as Paloma wisely said, we're not minority. If you think of two people, one is a, a woman, we're not minority. And yet, we're being mistreated. And this is not to advocate for it, because this is Leon Denis saying, it's not us, because we're here all women and people are like, oh, you girls. <laughs> but he says here, and I will quote from him as we go on, he says here, by teaching that the body is merely a borrowed form and that the principle of life resides in the soul, the spirit's philosophy establishes that men and women are equal in merits and rights. The spiritists reserve a large place for women in their meetings and works, and, and we are the living proof of it. Then... They even occupy a prominent position in them. They provide the best mediums because of the delicacy of their nervous system, which makes them more fit to play this role. So this is another story probably for another day because today we're restricted to social issues here. And where can we resolve it all? At home, right, friends? Luciana said, and I'll repeat for the third time, moral education. Where? Who is going to teach moral education? Is it going to be in school? No. A uh, special course somewhere? No. It's going to be at home. Who is going to teach our child not to roll the eyes to a friend? Who is going to teach our children not to be envious, not to be jealous, not to feel hatred, to forgive? Who is going to teach them? Like you said, it'll be the mother, right? No one else. If the mother is not there to to do the love, the care, and the teaching, we will miss the boat. And that's why we have so much trouble. And we're still so materialistic, right? The whole society that doesn't think about the spiritual, doesn't think about of the children or the future. We are still like very mistaken, making choices in how to live in the society. Yeah. So here he talks about the root of it all. So he says to us in this chapter and in the following chapter, he ends this chapter saying, the only remedy consists in the moral transformation that the superior teachings advocate and provide the means for us to accomplish. So for those who are watching here and being with us, Kardec Radio for Kids has beautiful lessons weekly 
We're just one month off to restructure ourselves. We'll be back in February, but every Friday, there is a playlist here on YouTube, everywhere you can find lessons after lessons after lessons to teach children about the moral transformation. And that's the final chapter of this book in terms of the moral pathway. It's the moral law. Leon Denis says to us that, and we'll quote, so we talk about it. Readers, if you want to get rid of your earthly sorrows and avoid painful reincarnations, keep the moral law imprinted inside you and practice it. Grant only the indispensable to the material body. Aha! This is something. Resolution for the new year. If you look at Amazon now, like the other day, I was looking at it, and you always have a feeling you have nothing. Because you look at things and you have a feeling, I, I don't have this. Oh, my gosh, this exists. I didn't know. Maybe I need this. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have. You have this feeling you don't have. Only go to Amazon when you need something. I, I know people who go to sleep and start browsing through Amazon. It's very dangerous. Because the other day, I was doing this. And I said, oh, here, oh, they're saying about this beautiful phone cover, very fancy, $50. And I was like, oh, maybe I need it. This is so fancy, right? So beautiful. And then Mentor Joseph said, you really needed a $50 phone cover for Vanessa? What about the people who have no food? You're going to spend $50 on a cover for your phone? And then I was like, he said, think about $50 times the Brazilian money and the people who have nothing. Are you sure you want to buy this, this cover? Are you sure? And then I was like, oh my gosh. Leon Denis, right? Grant only the indispensable to the material body, to the transient being that will vanish with death. But cultivate carefully the spiritual being that will live forever. So we need a spiritual Amazon. Maybe we need to create an app about it spiritual Amazon and create things that people are like, oh my gosh, I need this. I need this. We need to think about the format of this app, spiritual Amazon. And see, so people are going to browse through like, oh, this person is so patient. I need this. And we see the profile, the qualities, the features. And maybe we put it in the list of the things that we need, right? Shopping for virtues. Maybe that's what we need to do every night, shopping for virtues. I love the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because, it, you know, it's that inner reflection, right? It's something that we, we are not taught, right, to really... Uh, know ourselves and like you said if we have you know the spiritual Amazon that we could go to and really think about what are the values that I need to apply in our life my life and how how do I do it right because the first step is to identify and then then you can know what to do next right maybe it's uh, a course is a book or is you know affirmations that you can put in our, like there's so many different tools in the toolbox right yeah. but then um, and what I might use for myself might be different for others and so on so but the first step is for us to really look what is in this moral education curriculum that we're missing um, and what can we go and from there acknowledge and take this step mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful because he says, you know, if you want to get rid of your earthly sorrows, who doesn't want to? We all want to get rid of our earthly sorrows. 
And if we practice this moral law, virtuous development, our life is just lighter. It's lighter for so many reasons. One, because we're not going to sleep looking for things to buy. We don't need them anymore. You know, our houses are not full of stuff that we have to clean. It makes life lighter, easier. And, you know, it makes our future reincarnations also better. So overall, we are looking for happiness. We need to do it. And if we may add, this idea of an Amazon for virtues is fabulous because the goods, the assets that we would buy would be immortal. So we wouldn't have to worry about inheritance or disposing or recycling or running out of space because we would be taking them for immortality alongside with us as we progress. So this would be gifts for immortality. This is why it is worth it for all of us to invest in our own moral education as proposed by Leon Denis here, because it's an education for immortality that will go beyond this lifetime. And though our physical vests may change several times as, as the will of God desires, that moral set of virtues will remain so we will never lose what we shop for in our Amazon of virtues. Yes, yes. So he concludes, detach yourself, yourselves from the perishable things. Detach. When our children come to us and say, Oh, I need this. I'm dreaming about that. Often, I say to a dear child, if we die today, do we really need it? Do we really need it? Oh, Vanessa, don't spoil the fun. No, we spoil the fun because when we discarnate, everything is gone. Don't create dreams. We don't dream of things. We dream we don't dream of ideas. We dream with ideals, of ideals. We dream of being more fraternal, kinder, more patient, more resilient, more determined. We pray for, we, we dream of peace and harmony. We don't dream with a car and a house and, and, and food. Some people dream of food and I'm like, oh my gosh. I understand when we are feeling hungry, it's understandable. But when we're not hungry and we're dreaming of food, we need therapy. We need therapy because something is off. We're so self-centered that we're dreaming of things we don't need. Because when we have food, we don't dream of food. If we have a car, we don't dream of another car. Unless we forgot about what life is all about. If we open our closet when we have lots of clothes, we don't dream of more clothes. Of course, we go to stores and we're like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. I never thought about this. And our dream is to get rid of the whole closet and, and have a brand new one. You know, this dream of progress is great when everybody's happy on earth. But when there's so much inequality, this dream is the selfish dream. We're sorry to say we are pro-progress, of course, but we can't progress without bringing everybody together. We can't dream of a million dollar house when there are people who don't have a house. We can't dream of a beach house when people don't have a house. We can't dream of collecting cars when there are people walking miles in the cold to go to their work. Or children who have to walk barefoot to go to school in rural zones. 
we can't dream. And this may be seem socialist. No, it's called solidarity. That's why there are many programs to help those who are in misery. And misery may be somewhere close to us. It doesn't need to be in Islam. Because I got to know the other day of people who are living under wealthy roofs, but they are subjugated to someone who doesn't allow them to spend the money like go to a Starbucks and have one coffee because they say you're spending too much money because they want those three, five bucks to buy what they think is right. But for that person going one day to Starbucks or even if it is every day, it's freedom because they don't have to do it for themselves. We're talking about little things, right? But they're big things. So we can't dream yet of this fictitious abundance when there's so much inequality. And Leon Denis tells us here, keep and and. Detach yourselves from the perishable things, honors, wealth, worldly pleasures, for they are only smoke. Only the good, the beautiful, and the truth are eternal. So let's talk about this. The good, the beautiful, and the truth. Oh, my man. What a combination. The good, the beautiful, and the truth harmony we're talking about the ideal what is the good the good is not what is good only for us it's good for everybody for example you go to work if you go to work and you don't calm yourself you don't take care of yourself it's bad for everybody why because in our neurons in the brain, when we see somebody, we feel pretty much like what we're seeing. That's why we don't like to see homeless, because we feel, we feel lacking. And that's why we love seeing celebrities. Neuroscience explains to us. We, we read these magazines, we watch, and I go to Instagram like, oh my gosh, when you see somebody who is fit and you look at them, you almost feel like you are fit, right? You keep looking like, oh, I feel so fit, just to look at the person who is fit. The brain explains. So if I'm going to work or going home, showing that I don't care for myself, it's a disservice to society because that harmony that we may express is beneficial to everybody. So the good, the beautiful, and the truth all together. Look at nature. Everything is beautiful. So when we are talking about social equality, we're talking about ourselves contributing to it, like taking care of ourselves. We don't need to be top models. We don't need to be skinny, but we need to be presentable. We need to emanate some form of light, even if it's simple. But people can look at us and see some form of harmony even if we have imperfections, like a flower. Maybe a leaf is missing. Maybe there is a thorn, but it's beautiful. And that who created beauty? I didn't. You didn't. God did. If God created, so be it. 
we need to express beauty. And beauty is not only in the body. The things we say, beautiful thoughts. So here goes an exercise that we practice on and off here at home, especially with Virginia, who is a child. Quickly, we glance and say, give me a beautiful thought. Beautiful thought, because sometimes we just keep cherishing negative thoughts. Let's break that cycle and boom, bring a beautiful thought. And we, today we were discussing about what is a beautiful thought again? What is it? And then Virginia's like, should I say something that is not true? No, no, but what is true, what is not true? And truth is part of it. I am a child of God. It's beautiful. It's the good. And it's at the same time, true. Instead of saying, nobody loves me. God loves me. Is it true? Yes. Is it beautiful? Yes. Is it the good? Yes. So let us talk about this, because that's the way towards social harmony. I was, you know, when we're we're saying thoughts and things, there's no way for us not to think of Emmanuel when he brings to us that thought is life. And um, so, of course, we need to practice this change pattern of our thoughts. And um, I think we were instructed once by Mentor Joseph to almost take notes of your daily thoughts so that you know what is your thought pattern. As we don't recognize that we are thinking so many things that are not good, not beautiful, and possibly not the truth. So we take count of it and then we'll figure out our thought pattern. And from there, we can change it. Thought is life. Thought is life. Right. Carol. Yes. And so we may come from many, we likely come from many lifetimes in which we were educated to do the opposite of what we are discussing at the moment. We were educated to think negatively and we were educated even to have internal dialogues that are negative in nature. So we often talk about global warming, but we need to also discuss mental warming. Sometimes our minds are heated up in flames with thoughts that are uh, flammable, that can set ourselves on fire in a sense that it can create conflicts and it can destroy our, our efforts to love one another. So we need to put in the fire of, under, I mean the fire, the water of understanding on ourselves and Emmanuel also in the book Thought and Life chapter 10 gives us the recipe seek the good visualize the good mold the feel the good and mold the good with all the resources that we have at hand and our thoughts says Kardec in the book the Genesis chapter 14 are like the hands for the spirit so if we start thinking positively, we are 50% there. And the other 50% will materialize in action. So when we have a negative thought, which is natural in the current environment that we are in, we can exercise our will, chapter two of the book, Thought and Life, and make effort and repetition to replace that thought with a positive one. So if we say to ourselves, oh, who are we to speak of beauty? We are not beautiful, supposedly, hypothetically. We can look at ourselves in the mirror and say, yes, we are beautiful. We are beautiful creation of God. So if it is difficult for us to say we are beautiful as myself, we can look at ourselves in the mirror and others and say, oh, there we see a beautiful creation of God. 
And if we start doing this with ourselves, it will be easier for us to project that onto others as well. So mental cooling instead of mental warming. Beautiful, Carol. Beautiful. Yes, friends, we are talking about how to uproot the social inequalities, social issues that begin inside of us. And Leon Denis says, we need to aim higher. We can do it. We are children of God. We are born with that capacity. We were created with that possibility. We are co-creators. We can do it. We begin a new year with new resolutions, higher than this silly, nearly petty things we've been aiming every year. Losing weight. No, losing weight is not a real resolution. It's just, you know, often you see this. If you have a problem in your health, yes. But no, we need to aim higher. Higher than that. Higher than a new job. Higher than getting married. High. What is higher than that? He says here, being focused on doing the good. Probably we're going to eat less because we're more occupied. Probably, look at mothers. Usually, the good mothers, they have to nurse you lose a lot of weight, at least at first, because you have to breastfeed the babies. So let us occupy ourselves. We're going to eat less. We're going to spend less money in things that we don't need. So he says, detach ourselves. So focus on the good. Focus on beauty. Sometimes people are like, I'm bored at home. Come on, let's organize something at home because there is dirt. We need to clean up. Oh, but I don't want to do laundry. No, no, do the laundry. Keep, keep everything in order. And we will see that that beauty attracts good energies too. Oh, but I don't like cleaning. Well, maybe that's a resolution. Love cleaning throughout the year. Love organizing. Because the truth is that everything in the universe has order. And love the truth. Usually, we cannot handle the truth. We're still children inside. But we need to get used to it. Get used to the fact that today, we're here. Tomorrow, only God knows. That today, we're in the body of a woman. Tomorrow, we may not be in the next life. Today, we're wealthy. Tomorrow, we never know. So, the truth is this. Life is very ephemeral in a reincarnation. But what stays and is eternal is the good that we do. The good that we think, the good that we feel, the good that we visualize. So let us then in this new year, aim higher, inside and out. More on the inside than on the outside. Because changing the color of the curtain is not going to bring happiness for long. Maybe for a day. <laughs> right? So we're going to finalize today in a very different way. We're going to finalize with a prayer, a collective prayer. But a prayer that you can do at home, in your God at home. We're going to show to you how sometimes we can do this together. Sometimes people are shy to do their prayer. But it's so beautiful to pray together when we begin a prayer and the next person continues and the other person continues and we form this very evident current of prayer. All right? So I'm going to begin. Then Luciana, then Daisy, then Karen Paloma will finalize. It's going to be our passes. And at the same time, it's going to be our prayer. And you can join in with your thoughts and feelings so we form this current of prayer towards a better society. All right, shall we, friends? 
We won't pour music because we're going to take turns. We're just going to do is this. The music of our words is going to be the melody. Okay? So let us feel the joy of the presence of Leon Denis who comes from his the quote-unquote clouds of heaven. He comes from on high and encourages us to higher ideals. Dear God, thank you for bringing Leon Denis to us. It's been 175 years and what a joy. What an honor to be guided by his thoughts, by his words, his feelings. And we feel encouraged and motivated to transform ourselves, to feel the needed resignation, to go through the trials we need to undergo, but also to transform ourselves and make people's lives easier, bringing equality inside of our hearts, inside of our homes, throughout our relationships, feeling that we're all equal, that the apparent differences are just a temporary appearance. Deep down, we are all equal and we must have the same rights. And we thank you for allowing us to speak tonight and to speak up and to encourage one another, to support each other and to share these beautiful thoughts. And now we pass this word of prayer to Luciana. Dear, dear Father, dear, dear mentors, as we, come together, as we come together in this beautiful meeting, receiving the blessings and feeling the loving and care, of all the mentors, we feel how important it is for us to take care of our family, our society, in order to find the happiness and in order to progress. And as we study here tonight together, we would like to ask for strength, ask for guidance so that we can actually put in practice all these beautiful teachings that we received tonight. We that are marching and trying to move in this evolution scale. We like to acquire virtues, moral virtues, so that we can progress and be part of this new planet of regeneration. And as we always come here to nourish in our souls in hope to learn and progress. We would like to ask for the whole community of these ties that we made, the ties that we made throughout 2020 and the ones that we are making in 2021 this beautiful community that comes together to learn about Jesus, to learn how to evolve. Thank you, dear Father, doctors and nurses, 
for always being guiding us. And as we harmonize ourselves and our heart to march and progress, we'll be connecting through prayers, connecting through thoughts, with these good spirits that throughout the meeting, throughout the sections that we have, comes to nourish us, comes to help us in this progress, in this evolution. And as we continue vibrating, soaking in this love of our master, we pass the word to our friend Daisy. Dear Master Jesus, as we continue in this prayer and as we enter a new year, we feel as we start a new phase in our lives, that tonight learning with beyond the knee we can revisit the list of the priorities in our lives. The to-do list, the accomplishments, aiming higher with you, aiming, aiming to do the good, to look at the beautiful things within and around us and to always focus on the truth. As we enter 2021, we also pray, dear Master, pray for our planet, planet Earth, who is in much need of consolation, of strength, of renewal, peace, fraternity and solidarity. We pray that those who still lack the basic need or feel lost or in prison, sometimes within their own homes, that they can receive a helping hand, they can receive consolation, help, as we march to a world of regeneration. Feeling our present, so close to each and every one of us. We continue this prayer passing to our dear friend, Carol. Beloved God, we thank you so much for the gift of this precious reincarnation through which we have the Im immeasurable light of spiritism. And because we are blessed with reason, faith, we pray so that in this reincarnation, in this new decade, we reaffirm our commitment to co-create the good with you on the earth. We pray so that we no longer resist your call and that we surrender to the harmonious invitation that you have given us to let go of our pride and selfishness, to finally prioritize the collective good and true fraternity. We pray so that you grant us the courage to see the truth within ourselves and to let go of our own past tendencies so that we can truly renew ourselves. We pray so that in this new year, 
we no longer seek to be served, but rather we seek to serve others, that we no longer ask for our will to be fulfilled, but that we rather place ourselves at your disposition, begging for our lives to be a reflection of your divine calling for ourselves. We pray so that we have eyes that truly see the divine in ourselves and in others. And we pray so that every one of our brothers and sisters awaken for the sacredness of life from your divine wisdom and beautiful perspective. We pray so that everyone on this planet awaken to the reality that they are your beloved children. May we co-create the good with you always. And with this thought, we pass the word of this prayer to our dear friend Paloma. Dear Lord, in these final moments, we want to express our gratitude for the works that were delivered tonight by a huge team on the spiritual realm. We want to especially thank Leon Denise that leads the work of spiritism that is so important in the very topic we discussed today, moral development. We thank Leon Denis for bringing to us these messages and allowing these inner reflections that we shared tonight. We also want to thank the spirit mentors of the Spiritual Society of Virginia, of the Spiritual Society of Washington, D.C., and Kardec Radio that work tirelessly bringing to each one of us the necessary remedies that we need. It comes directly from our master, the governor of our planet. He knows our cases, he knows our families, he knows our needs and lovingly sends emissaries to help us. And to close these final moments, dear Lord, we want to pray that the many blessings that we receive tonight is shared with the less fortunates that are transitioning or find themselves in the lower realms. We pray for them that they receive this shining light and that this speck of it is able to maybe draw them towards regeneration. We pray for people that are in transitory hospitals, that they receive also this beautiful light involving them in regenerative energies. And dear Lord, under your permission and your protection, we ask to close this meeting tonight and so be it. Wow, what a beautiful beginning of the year for us. Friends, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us at cardiacradio.com and stay tuned because there's always more about Leon Denis throughout the week and there is more about Kardec throughout the year. We wish you a beautiful beginning Happy New Year with God. Thank you, friends.